We're back again, episode 312, Aussie Tech Heads, and it's another Thursday night, 18th of October. How are you guys doing? It's, uh, yes, welcome live streamers in the lounge, www.aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live. Welcome, lounge, welcome. The lounge joins us every Thursday night to watch the live recording, so why don't you jump on in, jump on in. That's Queensland time, 7.30 Queensland time. Um, look, I won't go through all the states, but they're on the website. If you go to the webpage, there's a slide at the top that tells you what time it's on, recorded live in your neck of the woods if you're in Australia. And if you're around the world, get an app. All right. Now, video of the show can be seen once it's recorded, can be seen on the YouTube or just by clicking straight off the video on the front of the page. We all know that. We all know that. The paper comes out twice a twice a day, morning and afternoon. I wonder how many of you have subscribed to the paper. Quite a few of you, I, I see. But uh, that's pretty good. Get on your iPad, get on your desktop, and they're uh, just a collation of news. I might, I might, um, I might uh, uh, spruce it up a bit and mix it up a bit and just get some different sources in there. I might do that tomorrow, so uh, hang around for that. All right. If you're into the tech news, and otherwise, why wouldn't you be? Because otherwise you wouldn't be listening to the show. But uh, at Twitter, at Aussie Tech News. Little two little tweets every half an hour of some of the news that is happening around Australia and the world every half hour on the Twitter. If you're in the Twitter, all right. Well, we better get back into it um, and start another week off. So we've got Shane's back. How you doing, Shane? Good, Glenn. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning to listeners, no matter where you are. That is absolutely correct. They can be anywhere in the world, and we do have overseas listeners. And look, maybe next week we'll we'll give you a plug, eh? Because uh, I'll get the Google stats out and uh, we'll go through those. But uh, how's your week been, Shane? Good. Yeah, it's been pretty. Yeah, been pretty good. Um, yeah, you know, work's been work's been work. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> and I must say that nothing. your sound is a lot better this week. For those. Yeah, well, we worked on that as well. Yep. For those of you who listened to last week's episode, uh, yeah, Shane, we were having a bit of a few mic technical audio issues as we do, but uh, it's all fixed up. So good stuff. Shane sounds like he's uh, on top of things. And that's good. Now, Shane's from Perth. And as you can see, if you're on the video, it's still daylight over there. So, um, yes. Yeah, thanks. it's still daylight over here. It's um, yeah, approaching 6 o'clock. Yep. Oh, good. Good. So uh, thanks for giving up your late afternoon and uh, going into tea time. All right. Now, and the, the, down in Sydney, Eric. <laughs> How you going, Eric? Oh, he's, hey, is he plugged how in? Going? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't see. Are you plugged in yet or not? You're right. Yeah, I'm in. You're in. Uh, yeah, it'll do. It'll do for now. All right, good stuff. How's your week been? Um, next question. Okay. <laughs> well, it would have. It should have been pretty good with Julia falling flat on her face. Would have. Would have been something. Oh, one, except for that. One of the oh, highlights. Yeah. <laughs> one of the highlights for you. All right, now Aussie Tech Heads. Low, low, low light for her. Yeah. Low light for me. <laughs> Eat dirt. Now Aussie Tech Heads brought to you by the hosting arm of the 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 giant conglomerate. <laughs> If you're looking for web hosting, jump onto uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting and uh, you, you should see some nice little plans. And this week, uh, just come online, uh, all sort of pretty much automated online is SSL certificates. So if you get a domain, you want to secure it up, you know, you want to put some e-commerce on it or whatever, take customer details and you think, oh, my customers need secure sockets and, and all this, otherwise they're scared of people. Go blah, 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 blah. Well, you can get the SSL certificates right off right off the Aussie Tech Heads hosting webpage now and they're going cheap. Get one while, you, while they last. Uh, now, well, I was going to say, I forgot to mention where you get that Aussie Tech Ed paper. It's uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. Easy one. Easy one. All right. Now, we, we better kick off. Will, is uh, he may be joining us uh, later. He's still at work and he sent me in a story. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that story if he doesn't come on in person. But we've got a lot to get through tonight. We've all got stories. We've got a couple of uh, li uh, little videos to go with some stories for those who are watching on the on the video. And we've also got a Garth. Garth is back with some sort of app review we've tonight. We've got a Garth. We, we've, got we've got a Garth. Got a Garth. <laughs> he's just sitting in the corner. I just patted him before we came on here. So he's, uh, he's waiting patiently. <laughs> so let's get cracking. Where are we going to start? Um, I don't know. Well, I suppose there's Microsoft news, a little bit of Apple news. What else has there been? Uh, let's, let's go to the Microsoft. Let's give Microsoft the top of the news, the news cycle this week, okay? All right. So what are we going to? Well, I suppose let me let me just scroll down to Surface Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like Eric was saying before the show, he's not going to get a Surface. I was just about to tell him why he is going to get a Surface. I reckon. And it, I said, I'll bet you a Surface. I don't get one. 
so I can win that bet. I I reckon you'll get one simply so. simply because it'll be Windows. It'll talk to your your office machine. It'll integrate seamlessly. I think it'll be. Nah. It'll do it for you. It'll, I, I I don't trust anything Microsoft that's first generation. This is going to be a piece of pus. Well, yeah, you could be the right. Next first one that comes out, probably a lot better. This will be blue screen. Anything you'll see on this tablet is a blue screen. <laughs> I think they've gone past blue. I haven't seen a blue screen for ages. So. Well, yeah, but this is this is a new concept for them. Their whole office is a blue screen. <laughs> Microsoft in the whole of Seattle is one big blue screen. You've heard of green screen? We've got they've got blue screen. They've got the blue screen. <laughs> and look, in all honesty, they're really not doing themselves any favors by pricing it the way they've done it here. Have you seen the prices on these things? So yeah, Australian uh, prices. Yes, yeah, so it looks wow. like looks like it's a bit expensive. Uh, the service RT can now be pre-ordered, so it can be pre-ordered. It's that close. It's that close to our little hands. What does RT stand for? Return to sender? Is that what it stands for? What um, does it stand for? Retweet. I don't know. Retweet? <laughs> I don't know. Root, rooted tablet? I have, do you know, Shane? Any ideas? I have no idea, no. Um, I'm lounge? Not Anyone in the lounge? Just Google what's RT stand for? I mean, it, it's the one that runs on the ARM architecture, but whether that's... Yeah, I know, but it's just a weird, you know, like mm. reverse technology... Look, I have. Um, I ha- I know I've read it. I know I've read. It. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, the Surface RT will initially be available for five hundred and fifty nine dollars for a thirty two gig model. It will also be uh, bundled, available bundled with a black touch cover accessory for six hundred and seventy nine dollars. And uh, for the sixty four gig model, that's seven- an extra one hundred and forty bucks. Yeah, but I like how that's they ridiculous. say. I like how they say it can be bundled with the, uh, you know, you get the tablet, the Surface, and then you can bundle it with the, with the cover. But the cover's one hundred and forty bucks anyway if you bought it separately. Why would you so, want to buy a cover for one hundred and forty dollars? Well, it's not I just. I could a, buy car. I could buy car seat covers for less than that. But it's 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 got the keyboard in it as well. Oh, God. that's why you're buying a tablet because you don't want a keyboard. If I want a keyboard, I buy a laptop. Yeah, but it folds down, so the cover's the 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 thing. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's it's root, it's RT, all right. <laughs> there we go. There's one. Now that's not like, that's so not the I, um, I have a potentially stupid question about this. Mm. Do they come in? Um, do they come in three G or four G, or is it just Wi-Fi? no? Just Wi Fi. Uh-huh. This is what I mean. I don't get the prices. Well, the touch. Yeah. So the touch cover, as we said, can be bought separately for 140 bucks. A um. Uh, uh, Oh, is that just a cover, or is it a type cover? A type cover is also available for one hundred and fifty bucks. It's, 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 it's like a keyboard. It's a, it looks like a laptop when you put it in together. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the black, the black cover is available in red, white, black, and magenta. So I've got a couple of colours coming out. The Surface RT will hit the shelves on October twenty six, coinciding with the launch of Microsoft's next generation operating system, Windows eight. There we go. Eric's got a little screenshot there. What do you got there, Eric? Well, this is the cover with it on there, right? Oh, yeah. But see, that's cool. That's good. That look, don't you think it looks boring? Compare this with an, an Ultrabook or even an Apple thing. Look, it doesn't look pretty. It's a typical grey, boring mm. piece of... And I'll garbage. tell you something else that I, I'm a little bit worried about is the weight of them. I think they're, yeah. they're going to be heavy, especially the bigger one. You, well, the full-on Intel... Because this is the RT, right? This is the RT one. This is the smaller one. The Surface comes in two varieties. The Surface, uh, the Surface RT based on the ARM chipset, and that's uh, sort of, you know, running Windows 8, but it's not a full-blown version of Windows 8. And then there's the Intel-based fully-fledged Windows 8 model. So Microsoft is yet to announce pricing on the Intel Surface model. So this is only the, this is the, the dumbed-down model pricing. No, oh, that's yeah. shocking. So this is going to be end up being laptop prices. You mm. must buy a laptop. Yeah, and it's going to yeah. be just as heavy. Well, I suppose when you think about it, that's probably what really with the keyboard f- flap down and all this sort of stuff. That's really what they are. They are a laptop, and that's why. Oh, see, the thing is that once again, Microsoft don't know what market they're in. Mm. Make a decision and stick to it. They don't know what they're in. Are we a tablet? Are we a laptop? Are we a bit of both? Yeah. You know, no, no one's going to buy this because everyone's confused about where it belongs. But you know what? I, I'm a little bit drawn to it because because it, it's because you like the infantile. <laughs> no, I, I like it because it, it 
because like, I've, I've got an aging Windows laptop, okay? It, it, when well, I bo- that's different. No, 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 that's fair enough. That's fair enough. You need another laptop, and you think, well, if I can combine the two, good for me, and that's fair enough. But for someone who's got a laptop, what are they going to use this for? Hmm. What are your thoughts, Shane? Are you um, for, against, or indifferent? Are you drawn? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, people had the same argument when the iPad first came out. It's like, well, what is it? Is it a... Is it a- is it a laptop? Is it a something else? Well, and, and yeah, like, but it was. Like, it is more of a tablet. Yeah, and and this thing fits the form factor. I mean, it's a tablet, but like you said, I mean, are you gonna? It's a pricey tablet. It's got a keyboard with it, and I mean, I'd rather get like an Ultrabook or um, an Asus, one of I those agree. Asus yeah. kind of Android kind of. Ultrabooks are beautiful. Some of these Ultrabooks from HP and Dell are really, really nice. You know what I reckon should happen, though? Because, I mean, none of us have got one. We're just kind of speculating, all that kind of stuff. If someone wanted to sort of give us one as a, um, as a, like a trial version or a re- review unit. I'm happy, to, to I'm happy to be nice to it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it won't end up under a truck. <laughs> no, or a door. won't be my doorstop, I promise. Oh, good. Now, so, so the RT, the tablet's coming, so you can go and have a look at that in, in stores, October 26, pre-order now. Go, go, and, go and satisfy your desire. Uh, PC makers have also are on a Windows 8 Blitz. Acer Australia confirmed to the CRN guys, that's the some, uh, what's CRN? That's, I've that's uh, yes, in, it's industry. Like news, tech, tech. Yeah, sort of like an industry news uh, outlet. It had already started taking pre-orders for Windows 8 machines. This is Acer. While rival PC Dell said it will open pre-orders for its Windows 8 products on October 23rd. So it's getting close, fellows and ladies. HP has confirmed its devices can now be pre-ordered from its resellers nationally. Pre-orders will also be made available through its online store in the coming days. And Microsoft has also announced it was also taking pre-orders for Windows 8 with a promotion price for an upgrade to the full version of the software for 68 Australian dollars for a DVD pack. So if you've got the 7, you want to upgrade to 8, go and get the promotion pack while you're, while you're there. Otherwise, this, this mm. offer runs out in January. And it will be 200 US after the promotion. So Rip off. get in there. Now, from October 26, users can download the uh, Windows 8 for $40 US. That's the price that will expire at the end of January. So either download it or you can buy the pack for six. Well, you just go and oh, download, well it. download it. Eh? Yeah, go download it. Quicker. You have to wait a week for it to turn up. Yeah, true. Now, um, now look, I've also got uh, the commercial. Now, a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week, or whatever it was. Um, I don't know if here it is. So uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, we had the uh, we said that the Windows Eight commercials were leaked onto the YouTube, and then they were quickly pulled off. And you could still find them if you, you know you, you you sucked around the internet and and did everything. But here's this is the ads are now. Uh, full on out there and I've got one right here let's have a quick look at this and see what we think oh no that's not it that's the wrong one so I told you I should have lined these up before hang on I'll get you the, here it is Windows 8 here we go here we go 10 9 8 8 they did 8 twice yeah. Three times they're they stuck. Can't even add up. They're stuck in a time loop. Oh, it's eight. It's stuck in eight. <laughs> so it's eight. See? Windows eight. Get it? So how do you like that one? So yeah, that's that was crap. pretty <laughs> that was pretty boring, wasn't it? <laughs> that's not that's not a good ad. No, not at all. So that's it's only Anything. Yeah, that's only probably one of a few. So, um, yeah. But look, one of a few crappy ones that they're going to bring out. That are going to work out. But look, that's, uh, that's all good. I'm, I'm going to go to Windows 8. I'm going to go and buy myself a little SSD and, uh, yeah, put 8 on it. Why not? Why not? Go right. nuts. Any, anyone else got anything to say about Windows 8? Or are we all good? We moving on? I think I've said all I can uh, say. <laughs> all right. No, I mean, obviously we're all going to go there eventually. All of them. No. Yeah. And I'm the guarantee, good thing is, so you've got a laptop there, Shane. What's on your laptop? What operating system? Uh, Windows 7, but it's a work laptop, so that's why. Oh, yeah, and what's but, on um, your... When I get my... 
that, when I get my desktop back, um, I'm going to have the host as Windows 7 and then I'll probably might run um, Windows 8 as a virtual machine or something. Yeah, so like, even if you're not going to put uh, Windows 8 on it straight away, I reckon for 40 bucks, you might as well put it in the cupboard. Like, oh, geez, for 40 bucks, go and put it in the cupboard, download it, put it, in the, put it, put it under the toilet seat. Do something with it. Yeah, um, yeah flush it down the toilet. <laughs> so moving on. Now, Facebook, I, I got this story. This isn't too bloody exciting, but I thought, oh, look, just, oh we'll just do this one quickly. Um, Facebook's going to uh, introduce a want button which is all to do with e-commerce. Only a few weeks ago, Facebook unveiled its new gifts feature, gifts in the US. It's not yet available over here in Australia. And that allows users to purchase and send physical items to one another via, this, via Facebook. And now it's expanding things further with a feature called collections that enables retailers to put want or collect buttons on their posts. So once users click on the button, it creates a wish list on their profile, which directs them off Facebook to the retailer's site where they can make the purchase. Now, the new feature is still in testing. Um, but the Facebook has confirmed to the TechCrunch crew that it is that it is a goer. It is real. It's, it is there. Collections can be discovered in news feeds, so blah, blah, blah. So pretty much it's you, you just go, yeah, I want to buy that, and you'd be taken off to somewhere else to go and buy it. So Facebook apparently are not going to be making any money out of the uh, referraling system, but they hope to that the resell or the merchants are going to advertise more so uh, people can click more once and be satisfied all right i knew it i knew you'd be excited so, with that one <laughs> well that was um i mean this follows on from the story that I, um that i mentioned last week but um obviously goes in great more detail so it sounds like facebook are going facebook are going classifieds or something mm. yeah so look facebook that they, they, they've look i think this is all right you know if you want if you see something why not put a little want there and let's let's get, get taken off to somewhere else People can click through and buy these items off of Facebooks. Off of Facebook, um, yeah, uh, people will be able to engage with these collections and share things that they are interested in with friends. Yeah, sounds good. All right, now here, here's one. Here's, here's another little fluffy little one that make you feel good. <laughs> now you're gonna, you probably want to go to the show notes at, uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, the AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage. Click onto the show notes because there's uh, there's one here called Inside the Internet. Now, this is a story, and it's got about 25. We're not going to have a look at all 25. There's 25 photos of inside uh, one of Google's server estates. So, yeah, Google has provided a rare glimpse in it to its, one, into its state-of-the-art data centers in an attempt to demystify the physical internet. The photo gallery is taken from eight Google data centers from around the world, spanning everything from water storage and cooling systems to robotic tape libraries. Google is offering a virtual tour, and that also is pretty cool. So go and have a look. At the show notes, there's a link to a virtual tour. So it's like a Google Maps, so you can just move around, you know, like use your arrow keys and move yep. around the Good data. Good idea. Stuff. I'll do that. It is great. Now, I'll just flash up a couple of uh, little pictures here. And there's, uh, some big, there's a lot of servers down in that little Ooh. pathway. And there's some there. Apparently the blue light. There was there's explanations about all these photos about blue lights and it's just it's just a mass you know just a massive massive infrastructure at all these data centers. Now if I can quickly, uh, well I'll just for the guys in the lounge, we'll see if we can quickly get up to the to a a um the street view of this thing. Because this is pretty cool. Like this, this is pretty cool. I don't know if it's this um, article that you found, Glenn, but there was another one where it actually showed the um, the pipes of all the water cooling, and all the pipes are painted in Google colours. Oh yeah, okay, you're nice. God, how much will that have cost? <laughs> <laughs> well, they represent different things. Like the, the the pink one is water that goes this way. The blue one is water that goes that way. And mm. yeah, so as you can see, now, this is here's an interesting fact for you. In Back to the Future 3, everyone's probably seen that, right? Yep. Um, in, one, in a scene there, the professor uses the word Googleplex. <laughs> yeah, no right. Joke. Yeah, he okay. He says Googleplex. But is that a... Is he, that uses, a... he uses it in context as well, like it's out there in the Googleplex. Yeah, right. There's a stormtrooper so, in there. Isn't that interesting? The movie was made in 1982 or 84 or something. 
but Google, because Google is an actual word. It's a mathematical term. So maybe... Yeah, it means it's a big number well, or something, probably, isn't it? Yeah, maybe that's why... Yeah. So maybe that's where it's sort of derived from. But yeah, purely obviously coincidental, but well, you never know. You never now, know. Now, you'll see my, my screen picture, Glenn. That's just me doing push-ups in India. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? <laughs> that I have not seen that before. That is a cracker. That is a cracker. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> let's get back on to... <laughs> Whatever you do, don't lose it. <laughs> let's get back onto the Google. Wayne, Wayne's going to go off. <laughs> Shane. Wayne, Shane, where, sorry, Wayne? Wayne. See, I'm gone. I can't think straight. <laughs> All right, so for those listeners on the podcast, Eric's just flashed off a picture of Julia face first, so we all come to expect that from him, I guess. All right. <laughs> Did you like the tour? Go and go to the web page and get that link. Oh, the, I will do that. Yeah, because it's pretty serious, good. I will have a look at the Google Plex. No, because it is pretty good. It is pretty good. Now, um, did anyone else want to bring up anything before we move on to – what have you got, Shane? Spin us one of your oh, yarns. Uh, what have I got? What have I got? What have I got? Uh, I might go something a little bit left field just to start off with. There was uh, – I stumbled across a story where – a, an Australian hacker apparently claims to have hacked um, or, or potentially hacked into pacemakers. Oh, yes. Yeah, the story goes on to say um, at a recent security conference, um, a hacker or a researcher called Barnaby Jack, um, probably not his real name, <laughs> claimed to have um, hacked uh, pacemakers. Basically what happens is there's a... Um, there's apparently a video that he's done, but he's not released the video because he doesn't want people to sort of, you know, copycat and all that kind of stuff. But there's a secret function within pacemakers, and um, he's managed to get that function to then release serial numbers and, and other details that he can then potentially uh, upgrade firmware on the on the pacemaker. And once one is being infected or compromised, any other pacemaker apparently within 30 feet can um, get compromised. So I don't know. I wasn't aware that pacemakers kind of did things yeah. wirelessly, but apparently they do. Is that and, right? Um, yeah. Huh. And um, the things that can happen potentially is that they can be programmed to send a, a, um, a series of shocks that obviously could kill the person up to 830 volts. Mm. Um, there was, a, there was wow. a story on, I think it might have been on... Um, anyone know anyone I don't like very much? Yeah, <laughs> with a pacemaker. Tell you what. <laughs> yeah. there, was this, there was another story that's similar to this about six, 12 months ago on Security Now where they were saying that um, all the top-end cars, their um, things like, you know, the, the tyre pressure and all that kind of stuff, that obviously has to transmit back to a central computer on the in the car wirelessly. And that can apparently be hacked and everything because that's not secured or encrypted in any way. Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a bit scary, a bit scary. But um, I suppose anything. I'm surprised, that he, I'm surprised I didn't think of that. That's quite bad. Well, I suppose yeah. I don't know much about pacemakers. Like I don't really I haven't really studied them. But yeah, why are they like wireless? How can they be wirelessly controlled? Is that how they set them? Is that, is that probably just to send a signal back to, like the physician, the doctor? Um, I'm not. I mean, the story doesn't go into in great detail of why they're wireless. I mean, the picture on the actual article is an X-ray of you know, the pacemaker in the heart, and the other bit kind of connected via a wire. So again, I'm still not 100 percent sure why they're wireless. But but I mean, I guess at some point, yeah, the doc has to get some sort of readings out of the things to see how the patient is or how the patient has been over a month or whatever. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, all right. Now, I think we've all got this story, just looking through everyone's show notes. Uh, the iPad Mini. Eric, did you want to start us off with iPad Mini? Oh, look, I can start if you force me to. Well, just because you're the fanboy, we'll let you start. No, I'm not the fanboy. I'm agnostic. <laughs> I like both sides, but I'm objective. Windows is plus and so is Android. Both ways. So oh, both sides. That's, that's yeah. my objective view. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, yes. All right. Now, why is Apple making an iPad Mini? That's the question. So according to this article, which was in the, I'll tell you where it was in. It was in the, I think it was the Herald. Yes, the Herald. Oh, it's all over the place. Um, it's in everything. Yeah, everyone's got it. But this particular one, it says they're launching an iPad mini because they're losing market share in the tablet market, which is true. Um, when they first released the iPad in 2010, mm. um, they had 90%. And now they're down to 70%. Yes, Hey, I have a question. 
Yes. In 2010, they released the iPad. They were the first yes. to release a tablet PC. How come they only had 90% of well, the Well, actually, no, there, there was Windows had some tablets. Uh, Toshiba had some tablets out there, more commercial tablets. Ah, uh, okay. For um, like doctors and physiotherapists and stuff like that in hospitals. Um, you know, high end some. Then they're, you know, $6,000 each. It's ridiculous. I've got a client who's got a couple of them. Complete piece of garbage. Still got to use a bloody pen, you know, a little yeah, touch pen. Yeah, thing, yeah. But, but they, they did exist. So I think they're talking about the overall tablet market, maybe not the consumer tablet market. Mm. Because okay. if it was consumer tablet market, they would have had 100%. Yes, yes. We're all very close to it. There might have been little Johnny all, all down All close there. to it. Yes. That's right. So they're, gonna, they're, they're saying they're going to release, they've got to compete with the, you know, the 7-inch, uh, is it the Nexus? Yep. Nexus yeah, 7. And, and the Kindle the, Fire. Um, the Kindle Fire. So now the question is, are they releasing an iPad mini? Everyone is, is assuming that that's what they're doing, but are they really? Well, Apple has sent invites out uh, to an event on October 23, trying to steal right. Microsoft's thunder, I would, would imagine. That's a p- totally planned that way, I, I would expect. Now, I don't think they'd have to try very hard to steal Microsoft's thunder, mate. No. So the invites have gone out. We've got a little more to show you. So being cryptically Apple, uh, you'd say that uh, that that could... everyone tries to decipher what the picture means, you know. But this one, I can't make it out. Look, when the iPhone five invites went out, it just had the number five in there, you know. Everyone goes, "Oh, it's just got to be what it is." But what does this mean? Is that the shape of the tablet? It's the Apple four. You know? It's the Apple logo. <laughs> the word little probably means mini. It, yeah, and yes. a little more. But normally there's an Apple logo in there. And that, what's that, that, that white shape there in the middle? Oh, that's the top of the Apple. Yeah, that's, that's the, the top, top of, of the Apple that's logo. That's the Apple. Yeah, yeah that's it's, the Apple. It's rainbow. Oh, I know. The, the, the iPad minis are going to come in different colours. Different colours. colours. Yes, yeah, that's what it is. Go. Yeah, that's that'd be it too. To, to, yes, because now look, and, and honestly, uh, yes, as we're going back before, yes, if, if the Windows Windows tablet or an iPad mini, like you see, because I'm, I'm in the iPad uh, ecosystem, the Apple ecosystem, if these iPad minis are cheap enough, so they're expected to oh, be, yeah. now I've got this here somewhere, uh, so the event will take place in San Jose, California, just down the road from the Cupertino headquarters. Um, the upcoming event, the smaller, the smaller tablet is expected to contain a 7.85 inch display compared to the current 9.5 inch display and be priced between 200 and 300 dollars. See, that's cheap yeah, I'm enough. I'm guessing 250 for a Wi Fi only 16 gig. So, that is cheap enough for me to buy yes. the kids' one. That and I think it'll be 299 for a 32 gig Wi Fi only. It'll be three fifty or three forty nine for a sixty four gig Wi Fi only, and then you can add fifty dollar increments to that if you want three G. Mm. That's what that's what I'm guessing the pricing will be. Now I'll get the one in the middle Wi Fi because you've got hot spots on your iPhone that's five. Right. Who needs you it, don't right? need three G. You don't need it. Um, and that'll be um, three hundred two ninety nine. Easy, yep. easy purchase. Yeah. Look, and and because like. You know, like because I'm already in the ecosystem, it's just like like I, I've got the Android tablet. Everything just transfers across. You look, you you punch in your detail and bang, mm. everything just downloads. Yeah, look, look, we've got the Android tablet as well, and the the little bloke goes crazy, and uh, the little the little girl, she's got my old phone, and you know they're going through the Play Store, they're downloading their games and whatever they want to get, so they're all happy. But I think uh, as far as the Apple, I think it, it's I, I just I don't know, I'd, I'd maybe buy it for the little girl because so she's got a tablet and there's a lot of there's a lot of educational stuff i know there's edu- yeah, look, oh, that's just what i want to heaps. do and they apparently um Without getting the, the, the week moment. before last they were um those the they, they came out that they were focusing on ibooks so there's right. going to be a big push for education and all that sort of and then there was another site that they discovered on apple that says the education pricing 20 or more so they're mm. gonna. I think they're gonna make a big push to to, to push know, them to, as a kids' education thing. Yeah, and yeah. that's gonna go off. I, yeah. I reckon this is gonna. They will. They're they're estimated to sell ten million tablets after Christmas. Mm. And they'll, they'll sell them. Haven't they'll they always them. done the education thing though? I mean, with the iMac and all that sort of well, stuff. Well, they, they have, but stuff. as far as the institutions. But I think now they're gonna put the emphasis on the textbooks. Yeah, right. Because okay. right. remember last year they came back. They came out with iBook Author, so mm. all the Textbook companies could start 
tr um, transferring all their textbooks. I gave them a year to start transferring all their textbooks. Now, bang, they're all going to be on there. Mm. That's perfect. Now, and um, then they had that, they've had that iTunes U and all that kind of stuff, that uni thing. That's right. Yeah, it's perfect. Mm, it is. It is. I think that, that's the go. Uh, now, I, I saw two clients today, and they can't wait for it to come out. Um, husband and a wife. They're not essentially tech people, but they said, is it true that it's coming out? I said to them, I reckon it's true. They said, well, I'm going to get one, and I'll get my kids one. There's should, four people right there You should they're going to get one. You should have, you want to know if they're coming out? Watch the show. What's the show? Watch the well, they show. do watch the show. These guys do watch the show. Oh, good on them. Hello. Hello to you people. Okay. Yeah, hello to people. <laughs> now, uh, Eric, Google resists two-thirds of Aussie takedown requests. Yeah, don't you like this? Well, I'm about to. I, I haven't read it. What's the, You're about to. Well, I'm, I might Well, like it's about it. the government. Um, hang on. Let me just scroll down to the... Where, where are we? Here we go. Google has resisted nearly two-thirds of Australian government requests to remove content from its massive online archive. According to the report, Google received 17 content removal requests from Australian governments covering 64, 646 individual items. Google complied with only 35% of these requests, ignoring the remaining 65%. It related to privacy and security, uh, one item related to the Google mapping product, um, it, it doesn't really go into the – obviously, it don't want to be things that the government thought it was mm. sensitive. And at the moment, this government thinks it's extremely sensitive. I guarantee you that picture that I just flashed up won't be there this time tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be there. It'll be there. They can't stop that going out. That's just that's no, just, of course not. That's just all over this job. But so uh, I'm, I'm happy that they're not, they're not bending over to government saying, oh, I'll take this down, take that. And they say, no, mm. can't tell us what to do. But they don't, do they? They don't bend down and – um, Google Not doesn't. generally. No, no, especially like well, even with China. Look, I understand if they someone put on, you know, created a website about how to make bombs mm. or, you know, a pedophile site and the Australian government said, hang on a minute, take it down. They went, yeah, you're not fair enough, I'll take that down. That I can I can live with. But if it's stuff they're asking them to take down because it's, um, it's politically embarrassing, no yeah. way, leave it up there. Yeah, no, it'll stay. It'll stay. What about the thing that happened a couple of weeks ago? I mean, it was a Facebook thing where Facebook were reluctant and said no and all that kind of stuff about taking the um, stuff down about the lady that got murdered in Melbourne. The hate, the hate site. Mm. Yeah. The hate site, yeah. But that, that should never be allowed. Hate site should not be allowed. No. That I agree with. No. Yep. Have you asked for yours to get taken down, Eric? My hate site? <laughs> yes. The Julia Gillard fan club. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, to, so, I'll tell you who else is pretty angry by the look of it. Uh, one that, well, a story that uh, Shane's brought out. Steve Wozniak calls Apple arrogant. What's that one, uh, uh, Steve-o? Yeah, yeah. Shane-o. I mean. <laughs> he's, he's one for speaking his mind and um, yeah, he's, he's had bashes at, at Apple before in the past. This yeah. particular one is where he was um, in South Africa and doing a, um, I mean, the, the audio... It's basically an audio interview. It goes for about half an hour. He um, covers a whole bunch of things. In a 30-minute interview with a South African tech journalist, Steve stated that the um, Apple was arrogant in relation to the dimensions of the iPhone 5, basically saying that um, just because you know, one particular person or they think that you can use your thumb to reach from one side or the other, then that's you know that's the size of the phone should be and they shouldn't have any sort of variety in phones um he basically implied that they should have brought out sort of different variations of the phone like uh you know like it is in the android market yeah. um so the, that was the the main headline the fact that he um, yeah but uh, wasn't x always been like that even when he was at apple he was always like that he was always very different to steve jobs in that he wanted a very open system he likes things and wide steve jobs didn't he liked mm. to tinker. They had very different mindsets. So I can understand him saying that because that's what he wants. In which yeah. case, while well, I say to Steve, he's a good bloke, um, get an Android, mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll probably, probably has. He, pro he probably does have in the, you know. Oh, he's got one of everything. Yeah, he would have. He, he wants to keep the rest of everything. Yeah. Oh, Shane, you wouldn't know this, but last year, this year, it was in May this year, I was out in the city um, for Mother's Day. I was staying overnight in, in town with my wife. And we're um, going back up into the uh, into the room after dinner, and uh, Steve Wozniak in the lift with us, mate. Oh, really? Yeah, same hotel, staying in the wow. same hotel. And well, I was—I um, I, I was dumbstruck. 
didn't know what to say to him. And my wife said, ask him for his fucking autograph. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that one. <laughs> well, he's, he's been in Australia uh, quite often and in the interview yeah, and in other here. places. He goes on yeah, to say that yeah, he's, um, he wants to move here because of our... Um, yeah, because uh, NBN. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, my advice to him is don't rush out, mate. It's going to be a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking of NBN, I've, I've, I've got some news on the NBN. Yes, now, I know you do. Now, wait till, I buy, wait till I buy me, me mouse. It, it gets lost in the screens. Um, all right. New suburbs, prepare for NBN. Are you one of the lucky suburbs that might no, get it? In no, the, no. The federal government has named 40 new areas around 165,800 homes to get the national broadband network next year. According to the minister, 25,495 NBN connected premises. That's just under 6,400 are fibre, 600 are fixed wireless, and over 17,000 are satellite. So, so what's the point of 17,000 satellite? Yeah, that's sort of defeating the whole purpose of the NBN. So yeah. overall, across Australia, the number of premises where work has started is at least 121,500. NBN estimate it can take an average of 12 months from the time work starts at each NBN site until services are available. Just 3,295 homes have been passed by the NBN since August this year. How many in total subscribers have they got? That's what I want to know. So uh, there was, I think, another... It's not very many. It's pretty poor. I think that article did go into, into more Here we depth. go. Now, I've got, I'm reading the New South Wales um, sites here, right? Blacktown, Labor. Coffs Harbour, Labor. Dapto, Labor. Brownsville, I don't know. Coonawarra, I don't know. Kanahuka, I don't know. Gosford, Labor. Um, Homebush, Labor. Mudgee Liberal, Penrith Labor, uh, Jamestown, I don't know, that's Newcastle, Richmond Labor, Hobartville, don't know, Richmond Liberal, um, Taree, don't know, Wollongong Labor. So how many Labors in that lot in New South Wales, everyone? There's a few. Quite a few. Now, where about in, per- in Western Australia, uh, Shane, you went near any of those places, Apple Cross, Brentwood, Mount Pleasant, Geraldton, Tokula Beach, West End, Muhammad's Flats? Hmm. Uh, I don't know where Muhammad's Flats is. Geraldton is about five hours north of Perth. So you're not um, getting it. So you know you're not getting it yet. No. no They've got South Perth. Is, um, yeah, South Perth is um, probably about half an hour away from me. I'm near the airport. Um, and in one of those like little satellite suburbs, yeah. like, like an estate. You'd think, that, you know, you'd think that one of the first places they'd put it are suburbs around the airport, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or universities. Yeah. yeah it just makes perfect think. sense. Because I mean, people look always... Oh, you're just yeah, idiots. It's hopeless. But, but anyway, yeah. look, it's all, it's all, it's all going to happen. But they say that it's going to take 10 years to, to, to reach their... From when, though? Well, hope, Because uh, if it was 10 years from announcement in 2007, it should be done in four. Yeah. But according to this, it's probably another 10 to go. So it's 20 years, nearly 20 years. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? It's just hopeless. I'm not holding my breath. I'll just have to, I'll be happy to re- keep restarting my router. I think. So here's a, we got a we got a story sent in from Josh. Josh sends in the story seven, the network seven that is channel seven warns internet pirates won't scare them into fast tracking TV shows. Well, I good. think well that's good for them. But I think that's a bit of a is that a bit of a, a hard attitude to take? Like um, seven network boss Tim Warner says the station will not be spooked into fast-tracking imported television series and dramas because of internet pirates. Seven has announced a range of new shows and the return of several big ones from 2013, for 2013. Uh, shows like shows that have already started to be screened in the US and haven't even come out over here, uh, Revenge, Once yeah. Upon a Time, and, and Downtown Abbey. Downtown Abbey. So, but what, I love Downtown Abbey. Great show. Now, what I... I just have to- Find it somewhere. Why I think this is a bit of an arrogant stance is I don't like this stance. I don't think it, you, you need to come out and, and bandy yeah, this sort well, of stuff around. I think they're just putting their, their – they're just making their, their point. 
they don't, you know, I suppose they can do what they want. But, you know, but if that if that means people aren't going to watch Channel 7, well, that's just the risk they're going to have to take. Mm, like, and like it's, it's not a, a great amount of probably the audience that they're going to lose. But, I, I mean, as, as more and more people sign up to Facebook, which a lot of people are, and now I know countless times I've had my, my experience um, uh, negated upon of watching TV shows because you find out what happens. You find you, you someone will will spoil Spoiler it. Alert, yeah. Will spoil it on Facebook before you get yeah. a chance to watch it, and then you go, well, what is the point? You know. So I, I think that that that's an arrogant well, attitude. Well, it's come to money. That's why they don't bring it out. See, if they bought these these shows are always more expensive to screen here if you buy them when they're fresh off the reel. In other words, they're showing in the US and they and they show here at the same time. Right. If they delay showing it here, it means they pay less for them. Well, I That's thought, why they do it. Okay. I thought it was to try and uh, match up with ratings periods, you know, like our rating period. Well, there's that too. They've got to balance that in there as well, mm. ratings period, because ratings periods in America, look, the school holidays in America is, is spring mm. compared to here. You know, they go on holidays pretty much all through summer. I don't know why they call it spring break, because they're off all through summer. But that's um, June, July, August. Now here, that's winter. That's right in the middle of our of our ratings period. So, you know, there is a bit of balancing there to do. But some there are m- months during the year that there is a crossover. That there are, I think, two ratings periods throughout the year that we match theirs. Right. But they won't bring it out because it costs more. You know, and, and it, it it's quite a bit of money to bring out. You know, Downton Abbey might cost you for a season. It might cost you three million dollars. Yeah, right. If you brought it out straight away. Yeah. But it might cost you $1 million if you waited a month or two. Mm. I suppose when you weigh yeah. it up like that, you'd probably go, well, yes, okay, well, we realise some people are going to you know, do it from the internet and you know, vice versa, and you weigh that up. And I suppose in that, they, they, in that situation, that is probably they be a pre-sale, fair risk. They, pre, they pre-sell the ads for all of these before they buy them. Mm. They go out there, their buyers go over there, they have their screenings and watch everything. They make notes on what they want to bring out. They come home. They ring up all their advertisers and they pre-sell a lot of these, the advertising on all these shows. They go, right, we're going to bring this out. We think it's about on this time, this ratings period, and it's going to cost you this much per 30 seconds. Mm. And but before they even write a check to buy the show, they have pre-sold all the advertising spots. Mm. So to them, putting it out a month later is not going to make any difference to their revenue because they've already pre-sold the advertising. Because another, another thing that just came to mind is um – is that some of these shows, you know, they they start showing them. They're on at eight thirty one week. Then they're on at nine thirty. Yes. Then at eight forty five. That's the worst part. And then this. And the then inconsistent the... programming is the worst yep. part. And if I knew I sat down at eight thirty every Tuesday to watch a particular show, yep. I don't want to sit down next week and be watching something else. Yes, exactly. And I think it's it's because of that. It's because of everyone's on social media and Twitter. These shows are getting spoiled, you know. And 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 yeah. if, if if you're anything like me, I don't like getting spoiled. Well, I like it no, well, personally. I don't like being. I, look, I just go and watch it. You know? I've already watched um, three episodes of Revenge, and it hasn't even hit our screens yet. Yeah. Well, so how how good is series Revenge? Two. And how and and the reason why I th- I just brought this story up is because I, I had something spoiled for me, and that was Dexter, the the big cliffhanger of right. the the big series. Right. You know, right. of se- series six, I think it was. Then on, on Facebook, oh, blah, spoiled. I went. Yeah. Well, thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Great. That's right. Great. Well, I'm watching uh, Two and a Half Men and Big Bang Theory. I'm up, and I've I've watched I think five episodes of Big Bang Theory, and I think they're only up to uh, so episode three, three or here or something. Yeah, mm. yeah. I noticed mm. that. Well, anyway, so, so I've already seen all these all these shows, so I don't really care what Channel Seven does. No, no, and no. I, I can watch them without ads. So there. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. Um, now, but sticking onto the same theme of TV shows, BBC Worldwide have announced first UK ultraviolet enabled DVD titles. Have you guys heard of ultraviolet enabled DVDs? I would think not. Please, ex- please explain. The, where the DVD, uh, like the lasers, a different color or something? N- I don't think so. No. Oh, okay. It's the so the four the four UV enabled titles: Doctor Who series one part seven, John Bishop's new stand up, the roller coaster, and Top Gear, our oh, and Attenborough sixty years in the wild. Um, will be released from late, late October. Both the DVD and Blu-ray for each title will be UV-enabled. Now, ultraviolet technology 
will give purchasers of BBC Worldwide's physical DVDs the additional right to a free digital copy of the program or show, which can be easily redeemed and subsequently seamlessly accessed by an ever-increasing array of devices, including computers, tablets and smartphones. Streaming and downloading access are supported to enable both online and offline viewing. Good idea. Good idea. Mm. So, um, mm. well, you know, it had, to, it had to come to that because why do people want to buy physical media and then go and have to buy the buy it again just so they can watch it on their device? So, well, if you go to JB Hi-Fi, some of their DVDs that you buy or Blu-rays um, have a like a free digital copy downloaded attached to it as well. Well, maybe this is that? what this is. Maybe this is what the ultraviolet is. Maybe, maybe the BBC have never done it before. Maybe they're just getting into this this technology. But I've not. Yeah. I'd never, never heard of that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, well, as I said at the start of the show, Garth is back. We're going to hear from Garth if I if I can get this thing working. And I'm going to try really hard. Oh, hey everyone! Whoa, it's uh, Glenn. Stop! 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 <laughs> okay. Now it opened in a really big window, so just capture just bear with me for a second and we're going to hear garth he's going to come back with an ios app as he normally does he's got he's got a whole bag load of ios apps that he likes and he likes to share he's likes to share what happens with them so let's go back to the start there and let's hear from a garthy boy hey everyone it's uh glenn and garth here with you again uh, Garth, bit bit flexible this week. What do you got? Hey, Glenn, how you going? Oh, I love them, don't I? <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what do you got? I've got an app called Flexi. Yo. Um, now, it's a little bit of a different app, and it's not going to be for everybody. It's actually an app that's, as um, most of your listeners know, I'm blind. So it's an app designed for blind people, um, but it can also be used by, by anyone who wants to be able to type a bit quicker on their phone. Right. So just to give you a bit of history, for a blind person typing on the iPhone, what you would normally do Put your finger on the screen, move it around until you found the letter, and the, the computer, you know, the voiceover would say the letter. So you, as I rang my finger across the screen, it'd say T, R, you know, be, say I ran it across the top, it'd be W, E, R, T, Y. Yep. As soon as I found the letter I want, pull my finger off the screen, and that letter's entered. Right. Then put my finger on the screen again, find the next letter, pull my finger off. Right. So quite a slow, laborious process compared to a sighted person just tap, 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 tap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Flexi does is allow someone who's blind or not looking, or someone who's not looking at the screen, to type almost as quickly as that. Right. The way it works is with um, pattern recognition. So if you've got a good idea of how the layout of your keyboard is, like a, you know how to touch type, I guess, or you know where all the keys are on the keyboard, without looking at the screen, it changes the keyboard. It has its own sort of built-in keyboard. Yep. Um, it makes all of the letters a little bit bigger gets rid of the space bar, um, so it uses more space there, a few things like that. And then all you need to do is just tap, tap, tap away in the general locations of where you think the letters are. Right. So, you know, you might tap near the top middle for the T, then a bit below for the H, then across to the left a bit for the E. Oh, okay. Okay, so you just tap in the general vicinity. You don't worry about trying to hit the exact key. Yep. And then when you've got for the, for example, yep. you do a swipe from left to right across the screen that enters that word. It'll look through, it'll, from the pattern you've typed, even if you haven't hit any of the letters correctly, it'll say the. Yeah, nice. So if, that'll speak you the word? It'll just say the word the. No, okay, yeah, yeah, nice. So it won't say each of the letters as you go like normal. Yeah. It'll just say the whole word once you've entered it. If it was the wrong word, say instead of the, it's picked another word that has a fairly close pattern. Yeah. So, and you've got it really wrong where you've typed it. You just do a swipe down and it's got, you know, swipe, 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 and it has other suggestions that match. Nice. So, so this, would be, this would be good when you're driving a car? Oh, you know, Glenn, <laughs> I would hate to be going on record to saying that you could type while you're driving with this app because that is definitely not what they're promoting. Only if you're in the passenger seat. If you're in the passenger seat and you get, maybe, yeah, maybe you get car sick when you're driving mm. if you're typing down and looking at your phone, but you can look out the window and type away. Yeah, no nice. Um, so yeah, so some of the the, the write up it's got, and it's free, which is a which is another the, bonus. Well, yes and no, no, it's, Ooh, it's yes free. And no. Yes, um, but that's so you can download and try it and see if it works for you. Right. To actually do anything with the text that um, it'll say it in there. There's an in-app purchase because it's not a cheap app. It's about ten bucks or so. Oh, four ninety nine. 
Oh, well, it's on sale right now. Go get it, guys. Go get it. That's <laughs> right. Top app in-app purchase, four ninety nine. Yeah. But so once you buy the in-app purchase, you can then use that text, you know, push it to Twitter, push it to Facebook, copy it onto the clipboard so you can paste it. Say you want to write a long email, um, you pull open the app, copy it on the clipboard and paste it into your mail. Nice. Now this uh, flex, what, 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 what's it called? Fle- Fle- Flexi. Flexi. F-L-E-K-S-Y. I think the developers are Greek and there's a, something about the S-K-Y, the K-S-Y that means something. I don't know. Now this is a, uh, well, whoever that, a, a game changer, David Woodwich, Apple ad- ambassador. Uh, but it, it has been the app of the month, R-N-I-B, in August 2012 and app of the month, Apple Viz, August 2012. So it's, uh, it's hot, hot, hot. Yeah. So uh, go and get a look at that if you uh, think that it can benefit your life. Download and have a go with the free one anyway, even if you are sighted and you really don't have a need for the app. Hmm. Just have a look. Have a look. It's interesting maybe. Hmm. Just uh, the, the way the pattern recognition works is just amazing. Hmm. It's excellent. Yeah. Better than swipe, they say. Well, we'll see. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next week <laughs> or next time. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Garth. That was good. That was good. So that's one there for the people who have trouble uh, typing while they're driving. So get that one. <laughs> Which you shouldn't be doing, by the way. No, it's very naughty. You should not be typing while you're driving. If you get car sick while you're typing while you're driving, that's the least of your problems. Yeah. Yeah. Kim can't. We all thought the same thing, though. Yeah. Kim can't uh, read while she's in the car driving. She gets What's sick. impossible? No, like, as, even in the passenger seat. Oh, me neither. I, can't, I get sick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, because I'll say, I'll, I'll say to oh, SMS someone for me. Gee, oh, no. What are you talking no. about? Just SMS, you're not even driving. Just do it. I'll make it do well, it. She just, she just doesn't like you. No, I'll make it until she vomits. <laughs> <laughs> now throw up and send this message. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, have you got another story, Eric? Oh, let me have a look. You have a we? look there because I'm just going to load up me next time. What, what else have I got going here for everyone to have We've a look at? have done the Microsoft bit. Uh, okay, Google, found to be Australia's second most attractive employer brand. Oh, yeah. LinkedIn has ranked Google as Australia's second most in-demand employer with the release of its new talent brand index. The oh. world's largest professional network with more than 175 million members ranked Google second in Australia behind mining and resource giant Rio Tinto. Well, that's interesting. Mm. With construction group Leighton Contractors the third. Ah. Interesting yeah. too. Who would have? Who yes. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thought? The in-demand content? employer yeah. rankings were powered by the Talent Brand Index, a new free service for uh, LinkedIn's talent solutions customers that allows them to measure and benchmark the strength of their employer, and offers new insights on how they can improve their ability to attract top talent. Oh, good stuff. So yeah. Google's always been pretty good to work for, as far as you're led to believe. I think that yeah. Look, if you can go to work in your undies. <laughs> yes. Straight from bed, yeah, right, and then turn up and go and play a bit of pool before yeah. you even unpack your laptop bag, and then you know go and sit in the toilet for an hour before you do any work, and then have a feed because it's lunchtime. Yeah, that's well, then, right. Well, you just, why just, wouldn't you want to work there? Just go and uh, have a look through the street view of the Google complex, and you'll see some of the rooms. I saw the room with a little foosball, whatever you call it, the TV. Oh, look, I'm and, a little uh, bit weird when it comes to that. I like offices to be look i'm sure they're productive and i'm sure they don't abuse it because they're all you know heavily um monitored in as far as their performance and they're all given you know projects mm. and so for example the guys say you've got to develop this in this time frame i don't care when you do it i don't care how you do it i don't care if you dick around for the next three months just but yeah. you better have it done by month four yeah yeah so they're pretty strict so they're, they're very flexible in how you use your time but they're, I think they're very strict on um, outcomes. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so that's, that's the thing. A lot of people think, oh, what a great place to work. I just sit down and bludge. Oh, believe you yeah. me, they don't bludge. You got to It looks like it. It yeah. looks like they're just having fun. But these guys put in all nighters all the yeah. time. Yeah. And yeah, like they've, they've got to perform. The output is obviously pretty high. But yeah, have a look. And they that. get paid a lot to do that. Also, they get, they get the bird, people that don't last at Google, they get, they're out Quick, mm. quicker than they get than when they started. They're out on the so street. There's a lot of pressure. You'll be able to see them on Street View. They'll be out. Now, I've got a little, I've got a quick one here. Exactly. <laughs> I've got a quickie uh, Telstra and iPhone. Now, Telstra had the biggest day of retail trade in history after Apple released the iPhone 5. The carrier uh, CEO, David Tootie, that's him there, 
told its annual general meeting in Melbourne today, or through the week that Telstra had sold over 100,000 of the devices since yeah. they became available on September 21. That's not even a month. Telstra alone has sold more than 100,000. Massive. 2D said the carrier had over 500,000 customers uh, on its 4G network. So that's fair. That's probably... Was that, what sort Pretty of number good. is that? Is that small? Big? Fair? Uh, that's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. So, Glenn, just yes. to preempt all the comments that we're going to get, the yes. guy's name is David Thody. Oh, okay. What, what did I say? Toady. No, you said Tootie. 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 Tootie Fruity. Oh, Toodly. what a Toodly. beauty. <laughs> Tootie Fruity, what a beauty. All right, Toady. No, what is it? Thody. 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 Yes. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. You'll get used to me mispronouncing names. <laughs> the carrier sold 193,000 of its T-Box digital set-top boxes and close to 150,000 of its T-Hub home phones. Oh, who the hell would buy a T-Hub? In uh, in the past financial year, so uh, no, 150,000 people obviously. Look, yeah. I don't want them to get any more than half a million on their 4G network. No, that's enough. I'm quite happy the way it is. Close it off. We're full. Be like a doctor. We're full. No that's more. That's right. Full Appoint- appointment only. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, no, no more. Uh, now, oh, here's here's a quick one. Has anyone else got any quick ones or any more? Uh, Shane, what are you up to? What what do you got over there? Text messages. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking at. So around, I found an article um, probably on the back of the, the um, is it Peter Slipper, the, the ex-speaker, the guy that um, that's him. got into trouble? Yep. Um, it was a story Allegedly. kind of, yeah, <laughs> a story kind of on the back of that where um, it just highlighted the fact that, yes, your text messages, your emails, your Facebook posts and everything are available for anything up to years. Some ISPs, the article points out that some ISPs actually hang on to them, have hung on to them from day one. So that could be like, you know, five years or however long you've been with your ISP. Um, I know that um, with Message Bank voice messages, they're available if you save them um, on, on the Telstra network anyway, they're available for, for days, I think it is, up, and then they eventually kind of fall off. But they're retrievable again. They're only just kind of... Mm. They're not available through the phone, but if you know, if they're asked by the authorities, they can retrieve them. But they say um, um, they say like further down in that story, it's saying it's saying that at, at the bottom line um, uh, that uh, it's an ISP policy. It's ISP policy for how long they decide to keep. Yeah, them. how long? Yeah, it's what? up to them. Six months, two months, one year. But but the ISPs aren't into law enforcement. So what the hell do they care? Why are they keeping them at all? Like, uh, well, there could be. Oh, look, I don't know. They have their reasons, but you know, mm. yeah. In case but, well, look, but the strange. thing is, they're trying to take that that choice away from them. The government's saying, "Well, you have to keep everything now for as long as we tell you to keep it," which I think is absolutely wrong. I actually uh, really liked what you brought up last week about what Malcolm Turnbull said, and that was if you if you write a note and you don't want anyone else to see it, you rip it up and throw it away. That's right. Why can't or a photo you... album or a, a diary. You know, everyone makes notes in their diary. Yeah. Some people, some people have online diaries. Yeah. You know, just private thoughts about their daily life, whether it be dramatic or otherwise. And they mm-hmm. might think, you know what, that was um, therapeutic for me to do that. Um, I want to delete that off the cloud now. And you delete it, but someone's still got a copy of it. Well, that's not right. You should be able to delete that. You should that. be able to delete it forever. Yes, you should be able to. I don't know what how you how how you ever going to come to a uh, solution, but um, there probably will be one. There'll be one. But you somewhere. haven't, with that analogy, you haven't written it on your own notepad. You've written it on someone else's notepad. True. Well, well no, you've saved it on someone mm. else's notepad. You've written it on yours, but you've saved it somewhere else. It's like putting the notepad in mm. the bank vault. It's their vault. You're paying. Ten dollars a month to have a private bolt box, and you can put anything you want in there. And the bank doesn't know what's in there. He gives you a key every time you visit, and says, "Put you in a private room." And says, "Righto, you can put in in there or take out from there whatever you want." I don't know what's in there. I don't know what you're taking out. Maybe we should all just have encryption keys uh, that that you know that securely scramble all these online. That's the keys. only way to do it. Hmm. That's how you get true privacy. But how, but even if you if you transmit your 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 scrambled message to say like Evernote, it's still going to be stored up there as 
text, readable text. That's Unless only, they've uh, got an encryption. Mm, that's option. only in the transit at, at this point in time. It's just in transit that it's scrambled. But anyway, yeah, but that's right. Well, well, for example, Carbonite, the backup solution, that is encrypted on the way up, and it's encrypted on their server as well. Have you got a so key? No can... Do they give you like a personal key? No, or... no, it's an automatic encryption. Right. Yeah, I think you create your own key or something by mouse moving the mouse or something like that. Because I've got something similar, and yeah, the the key gets generated by just random movements of the mouse. They sort of say move your mouse around for ten seconds, and all of a sudden that creates your key. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've seen something like that actually. Now here, so well, that, that's that's how my view. If I've got a private diary that I I wrote here, I saved it in the bank. It's the same as me typing up a document on my Word program here mm. and saving it at an ISP. That's the, it's supposed to be the bank vault, but yeah, obviously it, it's not. Yeah, things are getting things are getting tricky. They're getting tricky now. Mm. Well, it's sticking with this same sort of uh, uh, storyline. Now this is the, this is a story from Will that Will sent in. And uh, Will, you know who you are, so hello. And why are you late? Where's your note? <laughs> I hope he knows who he is. <laughs> so he's Apple tracks users with iOS 6 ad tracking functionality. So Turn it off. Yes, yeah. but how do you turn it off? That's the, that's, the, that's the secret. Oh, you want to know, do you? No, okay. I, I know how. But, uh, but what, oh, okay. what this story is about is that the Apple does track, your, does track you uh, and sends messages, you know, stats and all this sort of stuff back to what you're browsing and all this sort of stuff. So for advertising purposes. you want purposes. them to, you, don't have, you can turn that off though. You can. But it's not, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's what, the, what this article is getting at is it is a, it's hidden. It's not just in like yeah, general it settings it privacy. It's, it's, not e- it's not easy to find it. Yeah. So by default, it's on. If you want to turn it off, you got to go to settings, general, about, and then yep. about. Are you serious? Is that this is where it is? Go straight down to the bottom. Advertising, yep. turn it off. Yep. And diagnostic and usage, don't send. Yep, but it's in the about. What normally reserved for you know about about the makers and about the program and the yeah. version and all that. So and it's right down the bottom. So it probably it's is, underneath your, your it's underneath your modem firmware number. Yeah, so it probably is a little bit sneaky there. But, but so if, you, if you're one of those people who don't want to be tracked like that, well, go and f- go to the show notes, look it up, get this thing, and just yeah, if you not. can't work out what we just said. Are, right. you, are you losing any functionality by doing that? I mean, I remember no, no, um, no. people were jumping up and down about the location thing being um, you know, a privacy risk, and then people turned it off, and then they all whinged about their you know, mapping stuff and their compass not working and all sorts of stuff. I well, think on the connection ones, notifications, you can, you can pick which bits you want hmm. turned on on the privacy. So yes. I've only got certain apps on. So for example, I've got the Apple Store, the camera, uh, Facebook I've got off, Foursquare I put on, obviously you need that. Maps I've got on, um, Safari I've got off. Um, Why have you got Facebook Twitter off? I've got off. Yeah. Well, why you got so Facebook you off? That's just the same, like virtually the same as Foursquare if you want to use it that way. Yeah, but when you, because Foursquare is a checking in program. Yeah. That's you know, but with Facebook, if you post a comment, it suddenly tells you, tells everyone where you posted it from. Mm. I haven't used Foursquare I don't want for ages. I want to know I'm on the bathroom posting. <laughs> Are you on any of that, uh, Shane? Twitter's, uh, I mean, uh, Facebook's. Location and yeah, um, yeah. I've got. Uh, I'm starting to use Twitter more now because of the the podcast, and um, but I've been on Facebook for a while, more as a reader than a, than a poster. Um, yeah. But yeah, too. I mean, I don't kind of. It, it doesn't bother me that it sort of says because it, it's not that accurate anyway. It doesn't sort of say. It, it just has a general idea, and it usually, it, in my case anyway, it says that I'm in the location of Swan, which is more the shire that I'm in rather than the suburb. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, look, I probably have been a bit lazy. I haven't really checked to see what's on or what's off. I probably am too lazy to do that. Maybe I'll check now that it, now that I've been talking about it. Uh, now, my last story of the night is the iPhone 5 Lightning Cable. Now, we all know, now we've all seen this iPhone 5 Lightning Cable. We've all got one. We've all, if you've got the iPhone 5, that is. Now... Yep. Now, it's already been... I'm just trying to get a little picture here. I don't, I don't like how these things start by themselves. So, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get this little picture going here. So, now, the, the iPhone 
five cable. It's the smaller connecting cable that uh, that that came that changed the world, and everyone's upset about. Now, let me just play this, and I'll show you. There's um, Chinese company. I'll just mute that. So the Chinese company iPhone 5 Mod has managed to clone the new connector used on the iPhone 5 in less than a month. Apple included an authentication chip in its official lightning cable to avoid copies surfacing, which iPhone 5 Mod was able to replicate. Apple sells its lightning adapter for $35 locally for an adapter with a 0.2 mil meter cord. The cost is $45. Bucks. That's, yeah, that's expensive, eh? iPhone 5 Mod's cable and dock both sell for Australian $19 individually or for $40 for the pair. Well, that's common sense. But, uh, well, I quite like, if you're on the video watching that, it's, uh, the lead's got little LEDs spinning around it. So it actually looks quite cool, doesn't it? Looks like it's transferring information. Yeah, it looks quite good. I want one. But apparently they're sold out. So, uh, so I'm not sure. Go to the show notes. Go to that story. Probably, uh, what, that'd probably be an eBay thing, I suppose. I never really went that far into it. Yeah, it's called an iPhone 5 Flash Lightning Dock. Yeah, iPhone 5, number 5, five mod. Mod. Yeah. mod. Ooh, there it is in the dark. Coming to a swap meet near you. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so uh, what else? Uh, uh, Shane, you got any more stories there you want to um, get on with before we, uh, before mum, we mum, bail? Mum. I only sent through half a dozen this week. Um, I think you might have went through all yours. Yeah. Um, done the hacker, done the oh they um there's another one here actually I will touch on just real quickly. Uh, where did it go? Oh, the new version of um there's a new version of the flame virus called Mini Flame I think it's called uncovered by Kapersky Labs the um the Russian antivirus uh, software people. Um, the article goes on to say that um they stumbled for the want of a better word across some code that uh, has references or resembles the uh, the flame uh, virus that's that done the rounds and obviously and that's a, an offshoot from Stuxnet, Stuxnet. Um, and it's all in, embroiled in the the Middle Eastern, Iran, Iraq, America um, thing to try and uh, I think it's a t to attack their sort of infrastructure and then and Iran's nuclear um, capabilities. Um, basically, long story short, the the virus somehow managed to jump across into to the real internet, and and the story goes on to say that it's only that this new variant, at least anyway, has only apparently infected about fifty or sixty PCs. But good. Um, yeah, it's just <laughs> interesting to know that. Oh, there's. You know, there yeah, there's there. new viruses and stuff happening every day. You've just you got to make sure you've got your antivirus up to date, um, you know, because a lot of people. It's not just your your antivirus definition, but it's also your like your antivirus engine, if you know what I mean. Because so you know you might download your like your little AVG, you know, 2010, and you might be keeping your definitions up to date, but uh, it's it's the actual the engine is not up to date. You need the 2012. You've got to actually make sure your, your program, your antivirus program's up to date because it, it, it may work differently than uh, what it did three years ago. So you've got to make sure you're, you're up to date with all that. Scan your machine regularly, uh, you know, late at night if you leave it on all night or something like that, but scan it regularly and you should be right. Don't worry. Don't wait till you get one because they're nasty. They're nasty little things. Um, I think, what else have we got going? That's about it. Don't forget the... Uh, the uh, audible.com if you want to get a a um a free audible book you can go to the aussietechheads.com.au webpage click on the audible banner and it'll take you through to a sign up page and you can get a free one if you haven't already signed up so do that because they're pretty good and uh we'll, we'll start reviewing some more of those pretty soon and uh also the hosting aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting it's good to go Good, good as gold. Now, also through the week, you would have seen on Facebook and the Twitter that uh, we've been ask, I've been asking for your input with the logos and so forth because we're going to get a new logo for the show and we're also uh, getting a new, uh, like a landing page for the domain name. So that's all coming soon. The, the votes are in, the votes have been counted and decision has been made. Set in stone, can't be undone, can't be melted away. It's set in stone. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. I'll let you know when all that's up and ready to go. You'll see it when you jump on the webpage. 
All right, that's about all that we've got time for. So to contact us, uh, Eric is at Eric. This is on the Twitter, Eric Franco, Eric with a K. Me is Aussie Tech Eds. Will is Mr. Tomkins and, and Shane. Sorry, what is yours? Let me type this in here. What's at your Shane nineteen seventy three? That Shane nineteen seventy three. There you go. You're in my notes now. Good, good as gold. Never to be coming out. And uh, emails, Glenn, Will, Eric at aussietechheads.com.au and we'll sort Shane out with one soon so you can probably start sending him one as well. And that's about it. Anything anything else, uh, Shane? Anything else from Perth? Anything happening over there? Um, NBN? Crap? No, Any, nothing happening in the way of the NBN. Um, the weather's yeah, nice? Like, good weather? The weather's, the weather's <laughs> good. The weather's been um, mid-20s. Um, apparently it's going to be sort of pushing 30 by the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be odd over um, here too. Uh, yeah, it's always good weather over here. Yep, yep. Now, for those who are wondering, Shane is on ADSL 2, what, 6 down, 1 up, something like that? Yeah, something like that, yep. Yep. Uh, he's got a uh, professional microphone system and a mixer. That's how come we're getting his his golden dulcet tones. <laughs> and uh, this week I know how to actually drive the equipment. So it's all good. It's all good. All right, thanks, Shane. And uh, Eric, where are you? You're around there somewhere. Where Any- am I? Look. What are you? What are you asking me? Anything else before we go? No, I'm done. I'm good. You're done. Stick a fork in you. Done. You're done. All That's right all then. Right. All right. Don't forget the uh, lounge. Thank you very much. Live. Uh, AussieTechEdge.com.au forward slash forward slash live forward slash hosting forward slash paper. Oh, it's forward slash everything's. All right. So until next week. Have a nice week. Try and stay cool, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye. See you. See you, guys.